Welcome back to Movies Outpost. Today, we'll be diving into the action-packed trilogy titled The Lord of the Rings 1, 2, and 3. Enjoy the recap. The movie kicks off with a prologue recounting the ancient tale of the Ring of Power. Once upon a time, twenty potent rings were forged, three given to the elves, seven for the mighty dwarves, nine entrusted to the realm of men, and one the most potent of them all, crafted by the nefarious Dark Lord Sauron in the fiery depths of Mordor. This ring was infused with his malevolence and his overwhelming desire to command all other rings. A formidable alliance of elves and humans rallied against the tyranny of this ring, clashing swords with the forces of Mordor. In the midst of this chaotic combat, with Sauron wreaking havoc and the alliance on the brink of defeat, Isildur mustered the courage to strike down his enemy by severing the ring from his grasp. Triumphantly, the alliance emerged victorious, and the ring, now devoid of its master, passed on to Isildur. Instead of destroying it, he was seduced by its power, and decided to keep it as an heirloom instead. This choice proved fatal as it eventually led to his demise, and the ring, thought to be lost, settled at the riverbed. For a span of 2,500 years, it lay forgotten, hidden from the annals of history, until fate intervened. In the eerie gloom of a cave, the creature Gollum chanced upon it. Binding him with its enchantment, it extended his life by five centuries, all the while troubling his sanity. However, destiny had other plans, and the ring slipped away from Gollum, finding its way to an unsuspecting hobbit named Bilbo Baggins. The scene opens up in the peaceful land of the hobbits, the Shire, years after our adventure began. We meet Sam, the elder Bilbo Baggins, and his young cousin Frodo. The wizard Gandalf arrives, marking the impressive 111th birthday with his presence. The two greet warmly, with Gandalf noting how time seems to have spared Bilbo its usual toll. Later that night, there's a massive party with fireworks, dancing and all kinds of excitement. Bilbo delights the little hobbit children with tales of his epic journey. As the night progresses, Bilbo, amid a heartfelt speech to the villagers, suddenly declares his intention to depart permanently. He slips on the ring, disappearing from sight, leaving the crowd in shock. Back at his home, Bilbo encounters Gandalf, who insists that the ring be left behind. Tension fills the room as Bilbo, uncharacteristically territorial, refers to the ring as his precious. Gandalf, asserting his authority reminds Bilbo of the perils of the ring. After an emotional exchange, Bilbo drops it on the ground and heads out in search of new horizons. Gandalf, momentarily tempted, reaches for the ring but is deterred by a haunting vision. The scene shifts as Frodo enters, learning of his inheritance from Bilbo, including the mysterious ring. Sensing imminent danger, Gandalf hurriedly advises Frodo to guard the ring, before leaving to investigate his unsettling suspicions. Gandalf witnesses a looming golden storm and promptly takes shelter. An ominous glimpse of Mordor flashes, revealing shadowed horsemen, the dreaded ringwraiths departing its menacing gates. Switching focus, we see Gandalf in haste, arriving at an ancient library. He dives into time-worn manuscripts, uncovering truths about the ring and how its concealed inscriptions can be revealed through fire. As the ringwraiths inch closer to Bilbo's house, an alarmed Gandalf makes his way back to Frodo. Without pause, he casts the ring into a fire. Mysterious runes gradually form on the ring's surface, being some sort of elvish it seems. Gandalf realizing the full gravity of the situation. They possess none other than the Ring of Sauron. He elaborates to Frodo the interconnected essence of the ring and its master. The two yearn for reunion. Gandalf shares his discovery about Sauron's capture of Gollum, and how, under duress, Gollum divulged Bilbo's possession of the ring. To safeguard the Shire, the ring must be taken far away. Gandalf, understanding the magnitude of power he would command with the ring, decides Frodo should be its bearer. He warns of the consequences of wearing the ring the inevitable attraction of dark forces. In the midst of their conversation, Gandalf finds an eavesdropper, Frodo's friend Sam. Initially angry by his actions, Gandalf recognizes a loyal companion for Frodo's impending journey and appoints him as his guardian. Upon departing Bilbo's home under Gandalf's guidance, the wizard instructs Frodo sternly never to wear the ring, unless he wants to attract the malevolent ringwraiths. Gandalf takes his leave soon after, entrusting the two hobbits to their journey. Venturing beyond the familiar realms of the Shire, Sam and Frodo find themselves in uncharted territories. As night engulfs the world, they set up camp, unknowingly observed by a lurking wraith from afar. Meanwhile Gandalf gallops with urgency, reaching the domain of his trusted confidant, Saruman. Relaying the astonishing tale of the ring's discovery by an unsuspecting hobbit, Gandalf seeks advice. However, Saruman, already well informed of Sauron's emerging schemes, somberly proclaims that Mordor is invincible. He ominously declares that the forces of darkness are poised for a grand onslaught upon Middle-earth. 
confirming Gandalf's fears, Saruman reveals his knowledge of the Ringwraiths, masquerading as cloaked horsemen now prowling the Shire. As Gandalf prepares to rush to the Hobbit's aid, he finds himself ensnared, with Saruman sealing every exit. The White Wizard tempts Gandalf to align with the malevolent Sauron. Gandalf's staunch refusal ignites a clash between the two formidable wizards, their staves crackle and clash in a fierce duel, echoing throughout the sanctum. Ultimately, Saruman, seizing both their staffs, berates Gandalf for his defiance, casting him skyward. The scene then transitions back to the duo of unsuspecting hobbits. Wandering through an expansive field, Sam and Frodo stumble upon Merry and Pippin. These two playful hobbits, fresh from pilfering crops, find themselves hastily evading an angered farmer. The four unite, dashing through the landscape, only to tumble down a hill. At the base, Frodo's instincts heighten, sensing an approaching malevolence. As the chilling whispers of wraiths echo closer, the group seeks refuge beneath a tree. A solitary ring wraith, sitting upon his ethereal horse, dismounts to investigate. Frodo, spellbound by an overwhelming urge to wear the ring, barely resists as Sam stops him and then uses a fallen branch as a distraction, giving them a breakthrough. The team has officially expanded to four as they navigate the shadowy woods, always one step ahead of their pursuer. As night blankets the land, the wraith's silhouette continues to stalk them. Their journey through the labyrinthine woods is a test of stealth and wit, with the Nazgul ever watchful. Spotting a potential exit they sprint, the wraith hot on their heels, their flight leads them to the edge of a lake, where they capture a rowboat. With Frodo making the final leap aboard, the Nazgul halts, calling upon more of its kind. As the hobbits row to safety, the gathering wraiths chart a course to intercept them at their next destination. Upon reaching the bustling town of Bree, the hobbits are led through its gates straight to the Prancing Pony Inn, where they hope to rendezvous with Gandalf. Inside, their inquiries about the wizard to the innkeeper yield no answers. Settling down amidst the regulars, they plan their next step, all while a mysterious figure watches them from the shadows. This stranger, as the innkeeper reveals, is the deadly ranger known as Strider. Their concealed meeting is compromised when, in a moment of carelessness, one of the hobbits divulges Frodo's identity to the entire room, trying to rectify the situation. Frodo stumbles, and the ring accidentally slides onto his finger. This action thrusts him into the dark realm of Sauron's watchful eye, signaling the wraiths to his exact location. As panic mounts, Strider intervenes, whisking Frodo to a secluded room. Once safe, Strider, introducing himself properly, admonishes the hobbits for their recklessness and alerts them to the immediate threat. Later, as the town's defenses are breached and the ring wraiths rummage through the town only to stealthily infiltrate the inn, the unsuspecting hobbits sleep. But thanks to Strider's foresight, they remain untouched, while decoys in their beds are attacked. In the aftermath, Strider explains the wraiths' origins, once mighty kings seduced by the allure of the nine human rings, now eternally enslaved by their greed. With dawn's light, Strider leads the hobbits on their journey towards Rivendell, the elven sanctuary. Their path takes them across diverse terrains, each with its own challenges, and as the evening sets in, they make camp under the vast canopy of stars. Concurrently, in the dark confines of Isengard's mighty tower, Orthanc, Saruman converses with the shadowy essence of Sauron. The latter demands an army worthy of the power and dread of Mordor. As Gandalf remains imprisoned at the pinnacle of Orthanc from his vantage point, he witnesses a haunting sight below. Saruman, forsaking his oath as a protector of Middle-earth, orchestrates the creation of a formidable army, geared to unleash destruction upon the lands. In the aftermath of their day's journey, the hobbits and Strider find shelter in the ruins of an ancient watchtower. As night descends, Strider decides to scout the surrounding terrain, entrusting the hobbits with weapons for their defense. Despite his warnings of caution, the hobbits light a fire. Its glow, piercing the night, beckons the ring wraiths. Alerted by the eerie cold presence, the hobbits scramble to the highest point of the tower. The foreboding shadows of five Nazgul converge on them. Sam's attempt to fend off a wraith fails, and he as well as Merry and Pippin are shoved away. Frodo stumbles and feels the compelling pull of the ring. As he slips it onto his finger, the world distorts, revealing the wraiths in a terrifying spectral form. One of them pierces him with a blade. Suddenly, Strider bursts onto the scene, a torch aflame in one hand and a sword in the other. He fiercely engages the wraiths, sending them fleeing with his flaming torch. But one wraith remains defiant, only to be engulfed in flames from Strider's thrown torch. However, the victory is short-lived. Strider examines Frodo's wound, realizing the gravity of the injury inflicted by the Morgul blade. Strider knows only the elves possess the power to heal such a wound. He grabs Frodo and begins running through the woods. From the pinnacle of Isengard Gandalf, imprisoned and desperate, notices a lone moth fluttering near him. 
Seizing the opportunity, he whispers a message to it, which the moth promptly carries away. Below, the very foundations of Isengard shake and tremble as the orcs forge weapons, blades and armor. Amongst them, a new breed emerges from the mud, the Arakai, more fearsome than any orc, in the woods as Strider hastily gathers herbs to slow Frodo's poisoning, an ethereal figure gracefully approaches him. It's Arwen, the elven princess. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, she takes Frodo and spurs her horse towards Rivendell. But the pursuit is relentless. The ring wraiths, atop their black steeds, give chase, drawing ever closer, through dense forests and across rugged terrains, Arwen skillfully evades them. Yet their determination never diminishes. Reaching the banks of a river, Arwen utters an incantation. The waters surge forth taking the form of raging horses which crash down upon the Nazgul, diminishing the threat. Stirring from his slumber Frodo is met with Gandalf's reassuring presence. The wizard recounts his daring escape from Isengard's tower, carried to safety by the wings of a majestic eagle. His joy deepens as he reunites with his hobbit comrades, and notably with Bilbo. Time absent the ring's preservation has weathered Bilbo, yet he has productively spent his days in Rivendell penning there and back again, a hobbit's tale. Elrond, the revered elven lord and Arwen's father, speaks gravely with Gandalf. The ring's presence in Rivendell is unsustainable, it must journey forth. Pessimistic about the future of Middle-earth, Elrond claims that the time of the elves is over, the dwarves are too selfish to help, and men are weak. The ring's cursed existence, he reminds, is a legacy of Isildur's failure to destroy it. Amidst this bleak outlook, hope persists in the form of Gondor's exiled heir, who holds the promise to mend the divided line of kings. In the wake of this proclamation, the truth about Strider unfolds. Beneath the appearance of the ranger lies Aragorn, Isildur's direct descendant and Gondor's rightful heir. Moreover, the profound love shared between Aragorn and Arwen comes to light, a bond stretching over decades, yet their love demands a profound sacrifice. Arwen must let go of her elvish immortality. In the ensuing daylight, Elrond calls forth a council. Attendees include Boromir, son of Gondor's steward. He is swayed by the ring's allure and proposes harnessing its power. Aragorn and Lega list caution against this seductive power, asserting the ring's inherent danger. The conclusion drawn is unmistakable. The ring must journey to Mount Doom, its birthplace to meet its end. Gimli in a brash act to demonstrate the ring's resilience, strikes it with his axe, the blade shatters and the council becomes a cauldron of mistrust as they decide who must destroy it. The dwarves harbor old grudges against elves, and men remain skeptical of both races. As the council reaches an impasse, a small voice breaks the tension. Frodo, the least likely of all present, volunteers to bear the ring to Mordor. Gandalf, ever the protector, vows to accompany him. Aragorn pledges his sword, Legolas his bow, and Gimli his axe. Emerging from hiding, the remaining three hobbits join in. The nine companions are united and named the Fellowship of the Ring. Later Bilbo gifts Frodo his sword, Sting, which glows blue when orcs are near. He also gives Frodo a mithril vest, a valuable chainmail shirt that's stronger than steel but much lighter. Bilbo expresses regret for passing on the burden of the ring to his young relative. The Fellowship sets out from Rivendell. Their early days involve getting to know each other better and some sparring sessions for practice. They try to cross the misty mountains through the pass of Karadras. However, Frodo slips and drops the ring. Boromir picks it up and for a moment seems captivated by its power, but eventually hands it back to Frodo. Back at Isengard, Saruman, aware of the Fellowship's route, uses his powers to summon a blizzard to block their path. Stranded in the snowstorm, the group debates on where to go next. Frodo, after taking input from the rest of the Fellowship, decides they should venture into the mines of Moria. Upon reaching the entrance, they're puzzled by the password needed to open the gate. After some time, it's Frodo who realizes the answer is friend in Elvish. Once inside, they discover that Moria is not a thriving mine, but rather a tomb. It appears all the dwarves inside were killed. Suddenly, a water monster known as the Watcher in the Water grabs Frodo with its tentacles. The Fellowship manages to fend off the creature, but in the process, they're forced deeper into the mines with the entrance behind them destroyed. Navigating through the silent mines, the Fellowship moves cautiously. Gandalf grapples with his memory, trying to recall the right path through the labyrinthine tunnels. While he contemplates, Frodo becomes aware of a presence shadowing them. Gandalf reveals that it's Gollum, the previous owner of the ring, who has been tailing them since they left the Shire. Progressing further, they find themselves in the vast dwarven city inside Moria. Its once magnificent halls now lay in ruins. Gimli rushes to discover a tomb. It's the final resting place of his cousin Balin, a character Bilbo had met in his adventures many years ago. 
Grief-stricken, Gimli mourns the loss. Nearby, Gandalf reads from a dusty record book, which grimly describes the last days of the dwarves in Moria, ending with the ominous words, they are coming. In a moment of curiosity, Pippin unintentionally knocks a skeleton into a deep well, its clattering descent echoing through the halls. Almost immediately, they hear a foreboding drumbeat in the distance, the drums of the deep. The sounds grow louder and arrows fly through the darkness. The company quickly barricades themselves in a chamber as a horde of goblins charges at them. Defending their position, the Fellowship fiercely combats the onslaught, just when they seem to have the upper hand. A monstrous cave troll enters the fray, sowing chaos. After they stab it multiple times, it still stands. Legolas skillfully fires arrows at the troll but it then tries swinging its chain at him. He uses it to climb on the beast instead and shoot an arrow which does nothing. As they fight, the monster's attention turns to Frodo. Aragorn battles his way through goblins to confront the beast but is knocked unconscious. Before anyone can intervene, the troll stabs Frodo. The team finishes up on the remaining orcs and together target the troll. Legolas finally delivers a fatal shot to the troll's head, bringing the creature down. The Fellowship's relief is palpable when they discover Frodo unharmed. The mithril vest Bilbo gifted him saved his life from the deadly strike. The team advances through the intricate chambers but halts abruptly when they find themselves encircled by countless goblins, just as their situation appears dire. An unexpected red luminance radiates, compelling the goblins to scatter. Gandalf swiftly identifies the ominous presence, a Balrog, a demon of the ancient world. Stressing the magnitude of the threat, he urges the Fellowship to make a swift exit, signifying that this adversary is beyond their capabilities. Navigating swiftly through Moria's labyrinthine passages, they descend the adjoining stairway until they reach a disjointed section. As the team leaps across, goblins release a barrage of arrows. Legolas tries to counteract their assault, and when only Aragorn and Frodo remain on the breaking stairway, the cracking platform provides just enough momentary stability to allow them to rejoin the others. The group runs for the bridge of Khazad-dum as the demon shows its face. Gandalf, ever the protector, instructs them to cross while positioning himself as their rear guard against the Balrog. As the fiery entity steps onto the bridge, illuminating the chasm with its blaze, Gandalf bravely challenges it, declaring, You cannot pass. Deflecting its attack, he then utters, You shall not pass! The bridge gives way under the Balrog, yet the creature's whip ensnares Gandalf's leg, dragging him to the edge. He tells them to run before plunging into the obsidian void. The grief-stricken fellowship cannot dwell on the loss with goblin projectiles still threatening them. Under Aragorn's guidance, they escape Moria, seeking solace in the serene woods of Lothlorien, a temporary sanctuary from their ordeals. Within the depths of the forest, the fellowship unexpectedly finds themselves confronted by the Sylvan Elves. By nightfall, they guide Frodo to the ethereal Lady Galadriel for a private audience. In their private meeting, she invites him to look into a basin filled with water, known as her mirror. As he gazes into it, haunting visions materialize, the Shire in ruins, his comrades ensnared by orcs, and the malevolent, blazing eye of Sauron. Lady Galadriel solemnly reveals that these are glimpses of a future that awaits should his quest falter. She ominously alerts him to the internal fracturing of the Fellowship and the impending doom the Ring portends for each of them. Overwhelmed, Frodo questions his capability to shoulder this immense responsibility alone. Yet, Galadriel highlights the loneliness of his role as the Ringbearer. If he falters, no one else can prevail. Simultaneously, Saruman unleashes the Urukai, formidable beings of exceptional strength and size, engineered to annihilate the world of men. They relentlessly pursue the Fellowship with a chilling mission, exterminate all but ensure the Hobbit's capture unharmed. In the midst of this escalating peril, Lady Galadriel bestows upon the Fellowship unique gifts tailored to each member, ranging from bows to blades. Distinctly, she entrusts Frodo with a singular parting present, a luminous star of light, poised to shine brilliantly for him even in the darkest moments when all other lights are extinguished. The Fellowship embarks on their journey, navigating the river in boats, as they prepare themselves for the challenges on the horizon. Unbeknownst to the Fellowship as they journey onward, the menacing Urukai stealthily shadow them from the dense woods, poised to strike when they make landfall. En route, the group sails past the imposing Argonath, also revered as the Pillars of Kings, a monumental testament to Gondor's magnificence. Upon reaching the shore, Aragorn advises the group to recuperate suggesting they resume their voyage under the Veil of Night. However, Frodo ventures off into the forest. His wandering doesn't go unnoticed, and he is trailed by Boromir. 
The conversation between the two takes a sinister turn when Boromir's obsession with the ring emerges, leading him to forcefully attempt to seize it from Frodo. In a desperate bid for escape, Frodo slips the ring on and vanishes from sight. While invisible, he endures the lengthiest exposure to the ring's influence yet, having an intense confrontation with the blazing gaze of Sauron. Upon removing the ring, Frodo finds Aragorn by his side. While initially wary of him, Frodo's doubts are eased as Aragorn proves his loyalty. The glowing blue of Sting alerts them to imminent danger, and Aragorn instructs Frodo to flee, positioning himself between the young hobbit and the approaching Urukai onslaught. Facing the monstrous adversaries solo, he fiercely engages them, allowing Frodo a brief break to flee deeper into the forest. The battle's intensity escalates as Legolas and Gimli join the fray, buying Aragorn time to rush to Frodo's aid. As he fends off a few Urukai, Frodo takes cover behind a tree. In a moment of bravery, Merry and Pippin draw the beast's attention, sacrificing their safety for Frodo's escape. Legolas, Aragorn and Gimli relentlessly combat the creatures, striving to protect the hobbits. Despite their valiant efforts, Merry and Pippin find themselves cornered. Just when things seem bleakest, Boromir, motivated by redemption, joins the battle. But their battle takes a dark turn when the resonating sound of a horn pierces the battlefield, signaling Boromir's location to Aragorn. Trying to cut through the waves of enemies to reach his comrade, Aragorn cannot make it in time for Boromir's last stand. The Arakai leader, Lurtz, lands a lethal arrow into Boromir's chest, and despite his tenacity, subsequent arrows ensure Boromir's downfall. With his dying breaths, he strives to shield Merry and Pippin, but the Arakai manage to apprehend them and speed away. Lurtz now shifts his focus on delivering the fatal blow, but before he can unleash, Aragorn intervenes. The ensuing duel is intense, with both combatants battling fiercely. Yet, Aragorn, fueled by determination and grief, overpowers and eliminates Lurtz, avenging Boromir. Approaching the fallen hero, Aragorn listens as the warrior confesses his attempt to take the ring from Frodo. In his last moments, Boromir expresses his feelings of failing the fellowship. However, Aragorn, in a comforting gesture, assures him of his bravery and valor. As life disappears from him, Boromir acknowledges Aragorn as his rightful king, pledging his allegiance with his final breath. Meanwhile by the river, the weight of carrying the ring overwhelms Frodo. Resolute, he embarks solo on a boat. Sam, unwavering in his loyalty, refuses to let him journey alone. Despite his inability to swim, Sam plunges into the waters, prompting Frodo to save his struggling friend. Safely aboard, Sam recalls his vow to Frodo, reminding him of his commitment to always stay by his side. As for Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli, they deliberate over Frodo's course and ultimately decide to entrust him with his mission, pivoting their focus towards tracking and hunting the Urukai. Upon reaching the opposite riverbank, Sam and Frodo ascend a steep hill. As they crest its peak, the ominous silhouette of Mordor looms ahead, marking the next chapter of their perilous journey. The Two Towers opens up by revisiting the intense confrontation between Gandalf and the Balrog on the bridge of Khazad Dum. This time, the scene provides a fresh perspective, Focusing on Gandalf's experience, both adversaries plummet into the abyss, their struggle persisting even as they hurtle downward. Their clash reaches its climax as they crash into the waters of an underground lake. Frodo's sudden awakening, he and Sam persevere on their journey through the rugged terrain of Emin Mule. Through day and night they travel, but their determination is in vain as they get lost. As darkness engulfs the landscape, the slumbering Frodo and Sam are suddenly ambushed by the once ring-bearer, Gollum. Driven by his obsession for the ring, his precious, he attacks them with feral aggression. The battle is in dins, as Gollum appears to be an untamed and volatile creature. Eventually, using rope, they manage to restrain him. The rope's touch agonizes Gollum, causing him to cry out in pain, much to Sam's frustration, who fears the noise might attract unwanted attention. Frodo, though, sympathizes with the creature, recognizing the weight of the torment that the ring imposes on its bearer. They come to a mutual agreement to release Gollum, but only under the condition that he guides them to Mordor's Black Gate. As they proceed, Gollum's inner conflict surfaces in a heated self-debate. Suddenly he bolts, disappearing into the wilderness. In the vast plains of Rohan, the Urukai charge forward, clutching their hostages, Merry and Pippin. Hot on their trail are Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli. After three relentless days of pursuit, Legolas deduces that the Hobbit's destination is Isengard. Saruman's stronghold, where the wizard is amassing an army of Urukai under Sauron's command. At the same time, the armies of Mordor assemble in the thousands under the watchful eye of Sauron. Amidst this chaos, Rohan's state is dire. 
its ruler Theoden is ensnared in an evil spell, a result of the dark magic of his steward Wormtongue. The lands of Rohan suffer as orcs and the wild men of Dunland, spurred on by the evil wizard, wreak havoc, their ruthlessness claiming many, including Theoden's own son. A confrontation ensues between Theoden's nephew, Aomer, and Wormtongue. Aomer discerning Grima's treacherous alignment with Saruman, and his unsavory intentions towards his sister Eowyn, challenges the steward. In a display of his newfound power, Wormtongue exiles him from Rohan. In another part of the land, the relentless pursuit by Aragorn, Lega Lys and Gimli continues, as they tail the combined force of Urukai and orcs headed towards Saruman. As exhaustion threatens to claim them, the Urukai decide to rest, lighting a fire to mark their presence. Amidst this chaos, the captive hobbits, Merry and Pippin, watch a heated dispute between the Urukai and the Moria orcs. The orcs harbor a gruesome desire to feast on the hobbits, a suggestion strongly opposed by the Urukai. Tensions reach a boiling point, leading to a violent skirmish. Seizing the opportunity, Merry and Pippin make their escape, with one vengeful orc on their tail. Their dire predicament is interrupted by the timely arrival of Aomer and his Roe Hiram, who, with swift and deadly efficiency, decimate every foe in sight. Their victory is absolute. The dawn of the next day sees the Roe Hiram crossing paths with Aragorn. Despite the grim news from Aomer about the apparent lack of survivors, Aragorn's instincts lead him to the battleground. There, he discerns signs of the hobbits' escape into the depths of Fangorn Forest, within the dense canopy of Fangorn. Merry and Pippin's near brush with death at the hands of an orc, is thwarted by an unlikely savior. Treebeard, one of the ancient Ents, the respected tree being escorts them deeper into the woods, to someone he refers to as the White Wizard. The two hobbits are seen gazing upwards, anticipation and uncertainty evident in their eyes. In a surprising twist, Gollum genuinely commits to aiding Frodo and Sam. Their journey leads them through the eerie dead marshes, where the phantoms of warriors from the Second Age persistently haunt the murky waters. Entranced by the spirits within the marsh, Frodo loses his footing and plunges in. On the verge of drowning he is surprisingly pulled to safety by Gollum. That evening during a heartfelt conversation, Frodo refers to Gollum as Smeagol. This rekindles memories of Gollum's past life and identity. But their moment of connection is interrupted by the terrifying sounds of the Ring Wraiths, the trio scramble for cover as Frodo wrestles with the overpowering urge the ring imposes. Although they believed the wraiths to be long gone, they were dead wrong. A chilling sight ensues when a ring wraith, mounted on its fearsome flying fell beast resembling a vast dark dragon, patrols the sky, casting an ominous shadow, and then departs into the distance. In the depths of Fangorn Forest, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli stumble upon the enigmatic white wizard. Their initial apprehensions vanish when they recognize him as their old friend, Gandalf. However, he has transformed and is now known as Gandalf the White. The wizard recounts his harrowing clash with the Balrog, detailing how they both plummeted into the abyss. Their duel led them up the endless stair to the peak of Zaraxagil, where Gandalf emerged triumphant over the monstrous demon. To expedite their journey, Gandalf calls forth Shadowfax, the majestic Lord of the Miras, with Shadowfax at the helm. The group sets their sights on Adoras, preparing to confront the corruption that has taken hold of the Kingdom of Rohan. In the vastness of Fangorn Forest, Treebeard gently carries Merry and Pippin through its twisted paths. Their exhaustion takes over, and the two hobbits drift into sleep. Setting them down upon a mossy patch, Treebeard murmurs about the pressing tasks ahead and the urgency to gather the Ents elsewhere. Frodo, Sam and Gollum arrive at the Black Gate of Mordor, its guards vigilant. As they scrutinize from a distance, a battalion of Easterlings from Rune march forth, reinforcing the fortress's defense. A moment of calamity strikes as the rocky perch beneath Sam gives way. Tumbling down, panic grips Frodo who instinctively shrouds them under Galadriel's magical cloak. The camouflaging effect of the cloak deceives the Easterlings who come to inspect, seeing nothing more than an innocuous boulder. Just as they contemplate a daring rush through the gate, Gollum interjects, hinting at an alternative and subtler passage into Mordor. While Sam's mistrust for Gollum persists, Frodo sees a glimmer of the creature's former self, Smeagol, and chooses to take the path of compassion and understanding. As the Golden Hall of Medusold comes into view, Gandalf and his team ascend the steps, flanked by the wary guards of Adoras. Their weapons are confiscated except for Gandalf's staff, a seemingly harmless walking aid. Inside the hall, King Theoden sits upon his throne. Recognizing the malevolent hold Saruman has over the king, Gandalf steps forward. With a swift move, the guards are neutralized, granting Gandalf the opportunity he needs. He commands the dark spirit of Saruman to leave Theoden. 
Theoden transforms from that of an old defeated man to a king reborn. Disgusted by Wormtongue's treachery, Theoden banishes him. The king then confronts the lifeless body of his son. Stricken with grief yet aware of the looming threat, he makes the decision to evacuate his people to the fortress of Helm's Deep instead of fighting. Before the mass migration begins, Gandalf, ever aware of the bigger picture, departs on Shadowfax to seek out Amr and the Rohirrim, vowing to reunite with the others at Helm's Deep within five days. In Orthanc, Wormtongue hastily reports the events in Adoras to a displeased Saruman. Recognizing Aragorn's threat, Saruman dispatches warg riders, aiming to cut off Rohan's civilians en route to Helm's Deep. In the dense thickets of Ithilien, the internal struggle between Smeagol and Gollum reaches a climactic point. By the end, Smeagol emerges triumphant, banishing Gollum and feeling liberated from his sinister half. Dawn breaks, and the trio watches in awe as the ground rumbles under the weight of the colossal Southron war elephants, but Smeagol's sudden disappearance distracts the hobbits. As the mammoth beasts march on, the atmosphere tenses before Gondorian archers suddenly reveal themselves, letting loose volleys of arrows. The Southrones are caught off guard, suffering heavy casualties. Amidst the chaos, Frodo and Sam are discovered and captured by the soldiers of Gondor. On the rugged paths to Helm's Deep, Eowyn's intrigue with Aragorn deepens. Their conversation about the necklace and Aragorn's past commitment unveils layers of emotions, but their journey isn't uninterrupted. Rohan's scouts, having ventured ahead, find themselves ambushed by a warg scout. Thanks to Legolas's swift archery, the immediate threat is quelled. The mass evacuation to Helm's Deep puts Eowyn in charge of taking the civilians away. As the warg riders approach, Legolas's deadly accuracy takes down a few, but the vastness of the incoming threat becomes clear. Men of Rohan engage the enemy, while they hold their own. The brutal nature of the battle becomes evident. Aragorn's heroism shines, and Theoden's valor proves unyielding, yet war is unpredictable. Aragorn is seized by a warg and tumbles off a cliff. The aftermath is somber. Legolas retrieves the elven token from a mocking orc, a grim testament to Aragorn's believed fate. With heavy hearts, Rohan's civilians enter the fortified stronghold of Helm's Deep. Marveling at its towering walls and battlements, the army soon follows, and amidst the reunion, Gimli delivers the heart-wrenching news to Eowyn, dousing her newfound hope with grief. In the looming shadow of Orthanc, Saruman unveils his grand army to a wary Wormtongue, an expansive legion of Urukai, destined for Helm's Deep. We then hear Saruman's chilling decree, that man shall not witness another daybreak. The very earth seems to shake as they march forth, a harbinger of the cataclysm to come. Switching to the ancient woodlands, the gravity of the impending war is not lost on Merry and Pippin. The vast expanse of Saruman's army, visible from their vantage point makes their hearts heavy with dread. Meanwhile, in a twist of fate, Aragorn, believed dead, is discovered by Brago his horse along the riverbanks. With a steely resolve the ranger mounts racing against time to Helm's Deep. The elven realm of Rivendell, far from the immediate threat, is no sanctuary from despair. Elrond is haunted by the inevitability of the elves' twilight. He implores his daughter Arwen to forsake her love for Aragorn and sail to the Undying Lands. With a vision of their future, he paints a heart-wrenching picture of the grief and desolation she would endure, should she stay behind. This bleak foretelling shakes Arwen's resolve, swaying her decision to depart. Galadriel then confers with Elrond. Both perceive the coming siege on Gondor. Their conversation hints at a deeper dilemma, whether the fading elves should intervene in the fate of men or withdraw from the affairs of Middle-earth altogether. In the stone-clad heart of Gondor, the dimly lit caverns of Heneth and Un become a temporary prison for Frodo and Sam. The atmosphere is heavy with tension and curiosity. Faramir, a mirror to his fallen brother in many ways but also vastly different, grapples with the weight of living in Boromir's shadow. As he shares tales of their brighter days, an undercurrent of bitterness seeps through, revealing the complex relationship with his demanding father Denethor. A sudden awakening for Frodo under the Shroud of Night reveals a moonlit pool. It becomes the setting for a power play, with Gollum's life hanging in the balance, archers, their bows awaiting Faramir's signal. Frodo goes to save Smeagol, but he is instead caught. The pitiful creature, his eyes reflecting deep betrayal, is at the mercy of Faramir and his men. His internal conflict comes back to life as Gollum re-emerges. Faramir then discovers of the one ring that Frodo has, and makes a decision, from the allure of the ring's power, to journey to Gondor. Racing towards Helm's Deep, Aragorn sees the vast Arakai army and realizes the scale of the challenge ahead. Reaching the fortress, his arrival lifts spirits, but the mood quickly turns somber. With only 300 defenders their chances seem bleak. 
Aragorn urges Theoden to ask for help, but the king, burdened with past losses, remains hesitant. Meanwhile, deep in Fangorn Forest, Ents gather for a council. Merry and Pippin, the unlikely participants, watch as the ancient tree creatures deliberate slowly. A stark contrast to the world's urgent events, as Helm's Deep prepares for battle, every able-bodied man is armed while women and children take shelter. The tension heightens as darkness descends, but suddenly, hope arrives. Elven archers led by Halder, a gift from Elrond, stand ready to join the fight, a beacon of unity in dire times. The rain-soaked walls of Helm's Deep glisten as the storm rages, each lightning flash starkly illuminating Saruman's vast Urukai army. With every thunderclap, the tension among the fortress defenders intensifies, the chilling war cries from the approaching foes echoing back. As the women and children hide within the caves the warriors stand steadfast on the wall. An elderly man accidentally releases an arrow, finding its mark. The Battle of Helm's Deep erupts, the elves disciplined and swift let their arrows fly first, their silvery shafts glinting in the rain. They're quickly joined by the human archers, and together their combined firepower brings down waves of the charging Urukai. However, the Uruks retaliate with deadly crossbow bolts. Soon, scaling ladders clang against the deeping wall, and the monstrous foes clamber upwards, the clash of swords, shields and cries of the fallen echo in the night. Amidst the melee, Legolas and Gimli engage in playful rivalry. Legolas's tally reaches 17, while Gimli's more brute methods account for two. Away from the chaos, in the depths of Fangorn Forest, the Entmoot continues at a glacial pace, with each methodical discussion and long-winded deliberation, Merry and Pippin's frustration grows. At Helm's Deep amidst the pouring rain, Gimli fiercely swings his axe, counting each Urukai he kills. Twenty he yells, and almost immediately twenty-one and twenty-two. Suddenly, the ominous group of Urukai plants Saruman's explosive contraption. There's a terrifying pause, and then a deafening explosion. The deeping wall is shattered, a gaping hole in the once invincible defense. Immediately, the Urukai focus their attention on the main gate, pushing and bashing against it. Defenders scramble to brace it from the inside. From the blasted hole in the wall, Urukai flood in. Gimli, without hesitation, leaps from a height into the throng below. Axe swinging, elves launch a rain of arrows trying to cut down the invaders, but the Urukai numbers seem endless. The scene shifts momentarily to Fangorn Forest. Treebeard speaks slowly and deliberately to Merry and Pippin. This is not our war, he intones. But the hobbits, their spirits undaunted, don't see eye to eye with the old ant. Back at Helm's Deep, the battle rages. Legolas's arrows fly true, Gimli's axe never misses, and Aragorn's sword cuts through Urukai at will. Despite their valor, the Urukai pour in, overwhelming the defenders. Amid the chaos, Halder, the leader of the elven reinforcements, meets his end. Grief and rage surge through Aragorn, and he fights with renewed fury, avenging his fallen friend. The situation becomes more dire when even King Theoden is wounded in the onslaught. In a daring move, Aragorn and Gimli dash from behind and dive into the midst of the Urukai on the bridge, cutting through them at will. But it's not enough. More ladders rise against the walls, and Legolas frantically tries to topple them. The remaining defenders, now at their last stand, fortify the main wall. Aragorn and Gimli, using a thrown rope, ascend to the top. The relentless Urukai scale the walls and the defenders have no choice but to retreat further into the keep. Meanwhile, Treebeard, grief-stricken at the sight of the fallen forest, lets out a deep mournful roar. The Ents once hesitant, now rally with a newfound determination. In the shattered remains of Osgiliath, the tension is intense, as Faramir speaks of his plan to send the ring to his father. Sam interjects passionately. The halfling's words are a potent reminder of the dangerous power of the ring, the very thing that led Boromir astray. Frodo then says, they've come. From the darkened sky, the terrifying ring wraiths descend, riding their sinister winged steeds, the fell beasts, the group scrambles for cover, the very presence of the wraiths sapping their courage and hope. Besieged within the keep, hope fades for those inside. Yet even in the heart of despair, Aragorn remembers the words of Gandalf. With a fierce determination, he and Theoden rally the remnants of their forces. They make a desperate bid to buy time for the vulnerable. A final act of courage in the face of overwhelming odds, their swords clash against the enemy, the echoes of their valor reverberating through Helm's Deep. But as the weight of the Urukai closes in, a glimmer of light pierces the gloom. Gandalf, the White Rider, atop Shadowfax, stands tall against the dawn's early light. The silhouette of Aomer and the riders of the Rohirrim is an awe-inspiring sight against the glowing horizon. As they charge, a wave of hope sweeps through the defenders of Helm's Deep. The sun's rays cast a blinding glare upon the Urukai, sowing confusion and panic in their ranks. The cavalry crashes into them like a tidal wave, swords flashing and hooves trampling. Victory, it seems, is snatched from the jaws of defeat.
Away from this battlefield, in Isengard, nature's oldest guardians unleash their wrath, the Ents with their towering stature, wield boulders as mere pebbles, wreaking havoc upon Saruman's desecration, their fury both terrifying and awe-inspiring, leaves no orc standing. Saruman, once a mighty wizard, is now a mere spectator to the destruction of his industrial monstrosity, the Ents, in a strategic act of vengeance, breach a dam, and water surges forth. The water engulfs the very foundation of Isengard, cleansing it of its taint. The destructive might of Saruman is drowned, and the resilience of the Ents stands tall, a testament to nature's enduring power. Back in the ancient city of Osgiliath, the air is thick with tension. The Ring Wraith hunts Frodo, drawn to the Ring's irresistible charm. But it is not to be this day. With Sam's fierce loyalty and a timely arrow from Faramir, the Ring Wraith's pursuit is thwarted. But the weight of the Ring is heavy and its allure ever-growing threatening to overtake Frodo. As we watch the army at Helm's Deep kill the evil army and the Ents succeed in demolishing Isengard, Sam narrates how the story must go on and they must finish their quest, regardless of the danger because there is still good in the world which is worth fighting for. Faramir listens to this and decides to free them even though it will forfeit his own life as per the Gondorian law. Meanwhile back at Helm's Deep, as the remnants of Saruman's army flee, they are met by the ancient protectors of the forest, the Huorns. The aftermath of the epic battle reveals tales of valor and friendship. Aragorn and Eowyn embrace. Legolas and Gimli continue their friendly rivalry, with Legolas claiming 42 kills, and Gimli claiming 43. The battle is won but the war is far from over. Gandalf speaks a sobering truth. Sauron's retribution is imminent and the weight of Middle-earth's fate rests on Frodo and Sam. Their path is fraught with danger, not least from Gollum. The treacherous creature, feeling scorned and betrayed, contemplates a sinister plan, plotting to lead them to her. With the future uncertain and the path ahead treacherous, the two towers closes, setting the stage for the final act. In the opening scene, we witness a flashback to many years before the events of the main story. Two young hobbits, Smeagol and his friend Deagle, are fishing together in the Gladden fields near the river Anduin. Deagle is suddenly dragged into the river by a powerful catch and discovers the golden one ring lying in the riverbed mud. Entranced by its beauty he admires it closely. Smeagol immediately becomes obsessed with possessing the ring for himself. Demanding that Deagle give him the ring as a gift for his birthday, Smeagol grows enraged when Deagle refuses. Their squabble escalates into a violent struggle during which Smeagol kills him and claims the ring. Shunned by his community, he is exiled, and forced to flee into the wilderness alone with only the ring as comfort. The ring slowly tortures and corrupts his body and mind, its evil power twisting his personality as it extends his life unnaturally. Taking refuge in the Misty Mountains, this once ordinary hobbit deteriorates into a wretched slimy cave-dwelling creature known only as Gollum. Hundreds of years later, two young hobbits chosen to carry the fate of Middle-earth approach the dark land of Mordor, drawn ever closer to the fires of Mount Doom where the ring must be destroyed. Far away to the west, beyond the mountains, the remainder of the Fellowship prepare for battle against the forces of Mordor. With the riders of Rohan, they ride to Isengard, where they reunite with Merry and Pippin among the rubble. They discover the defeated wizard Saruman imprisoned at the pinnacle of Orthanc by the ancient Ents, Gandalf counsels mercy, believing Saruman now powerless and no longer a threat. Saruman attempts to sway them with his voice but fails, Gandalf symbolically shatters his staff and expels him from the Order of Wizards, damning him. Wormtongue, who remained loyal to Saruman until the end, suddenly attacks in anger, but is shot dead by Legolas. Saruman falls from the tower to his death, landing tragically upon a large spiked wheel. Pippin's curiosity leads him to take the Seeing Stone known as a Palantir, to which Gandalf hides under his cloak. The Fellowship makes their way to Adoras, the capital of Rohan where King Theoden has organized a grand feast in the Golden Hall to honor the warriors fallen at the Battle of Helm's Deep. Eowyn steals lingering glances at Aragorn, unable to conceal her growing affection. The king notices this but gives his blessing. For Aragorn has proven an honorable ally and masterminded their hard-won victory against impossible odds. Amidst the revelry Gandalf confides his nagging doubts. Time is running short for Frodo's quest to destroy the Ring in Mordor, he fears. But Aragorn reassures the wizard to keep faith. In his heart, he feels certain Frodo yet lives and to trust in their strength. As the hobbits try to rest, Gollum creeps away into the shadows, muttering to himself in conflict. The lingering shred of goodness left in him feels doubts about betraying the master who showed him mercy. But the darker half that is Gollum silences these qualms, insisting the murder of Daigle proved he could kill again if needed. 
Gollum will lead the hobbits to their doom in Shelob's lair if it returns the ring. His cunning plan is to abandon the hobbits in a tunnel to her. Once she has dispatched them, he can reclaim his precious prize. Overhearing Gollum scheming, Sam flies into a rage and attacks him for his treason. But Frodo intervenes, insisting Gollum must be their guide, for without him the quest is doomed. Begrudgingly, Sam backs down. As Frodo turns away, Gollum shoots Sam a sly, gloating smile. That fateful night in Adora's, Hippon's insatiable curiosity gets the better of him. As Gandalf sleeps, he quietly takes the Palantir Seeing Stone, desperate to uncover its secrets. Peering into its dark depths, Pippin sees a vision of Minas Tirith's white tree consumed by roaring flames, but looking into the stone alerts Sauron to his presence. The Dark Lord's mind invades Pippin's, subjecting the young hobbit to excruciating mental torture as he interrogates him about the ring. Aragorn tries to wrest the stone away, but Gandalf quickly covers the orb. Though shaken, Pippin recovers, and Gandalf confirms he revealed nothing of Frodo's quest under Sauron's torment. But Sauron now believes Pippin possesses the One Ring and is bringing it to Minas Tirith. Realizing the city will become his next target, Gandalf decides they must warn Gondor's steward at once. He swiftly rides for Minas Tirith, taking Pippin with him as well. As Arwen prepares to depart Middle-earth for the Undying Lands, she suddenly receives a vision of her future son Eldarion, who she will bear with Aragorn should he claim his birthright. Realizing her father, Elrond had deceived her about having no future with Aragorn. She swiftly returns to Rivendell and convinces Elrond that her destiny lies with Aragorn. She declares the long-foretold time has arrived to reforge the shattered sword of kings Narsal. This ancient heirloom of Isildur, broken in battle with Sauron himself, is the birthright of the true king and could shift the tide against the shadow. If Aragorn is to claim his inheritance, he will need the sword reforged anew. Gandalf and Pippin ride hard across the land, arriving at the white city of Minas Tirith, forged from the stone of Mindoluin. There Pippin recognizes the white tree as they seek out steward Denethor, who they find mourning his fallen son Boromir. Pippin pledges his loyalty to Denethor in honor of Boromir's sacrifice. Lost in grief, Denethor has neglected preparations to defend Minas Tirith against Sauron. He reveals to Gandalf his knowledge of Aragorn's claim to the throne and refusal to allow aid from Rohan. Determined to maintain his rule, Gandalf storms out in rage, and they look at the approaching storm clouds from Mordor, knowing that an army will follow suit. That fateful night in Minas Tirith, as Pippin dons his armor, Gandalf surveys Mordor brooding on the horizon. He warns that Sauron has assembled an army more fearsome than just orcs, including monstrous beasts and mercenaries from distant lands. Worse still, Sauron has unleashed his fiercest servant to lead them the undying witch king of Angmar, chief of the Nazgul, who stabbed Frodo on Weathertop, as the greatest of the Nine Ringwraiths, whose stronghold lies in Minas Morgul. Frodo, Sam and Gollum approach the evil citadel of Minas Morgul. Gollum leads them up a towering cliff staircase through the Mountains of Shadow. Suddenly the ring is drawn towards the city's power and Frodo succumbs, only for Gollum and Sam to pull him back. A pillar of green fire erupts from Minas Morgul into the night sky. In Minas Tirith, Gandalf, Pippin and the Gondorians see this signal flare in the distance. In Morgul Vale, Frodo collapses as the city falls silent once more. Then the screech of the Witch King pierces the air as he bursts forth on his fell beast, reviving Frodo's Morgul blade wound. At his cry, Sauron's vast army marches out behind their dark captain. The trio ascend the treacherous pass of Sirith Ungol. Sam warns Gollum not to harm Frodo or he'll be gone for good. In Minas Tirith, Gandalf realizes the mortar forces are on the move. The Great War now begins. In the ruins of Osgiliath, Faramir and his ranger garrison prepare their defenses. Believing the orcs lie low across the river, unbeknownst to them, the orcs are silently rafting towards the city, led by the hideously deformed Gothmog. As the rafts draw near, a soldier spots them and is quickly slain on Gothmog's order. Faramir realizes they face a surprise attack, not from the north as expected. He swiftly organizes the defense as the orcs approach. When the rafts reach shore, Gothmog orders the charge. Faramir leads the counterattack as orcs pour into Asgiliath. The garrison fights valiantly at first, but are soon overwhelmed by superior numbers as more rafts land. The orcs swarm over the bridge into the city. In Minas Tirith, Pippin secretly ignites the beacon, signaling Gondor's call for aid. As the chain swiftly relays the message, Gandalf watches from the walls while Denethor broods unhappily. In Adora's, Aragorn urgently tells Theoden, Gondor calls for aid. After a moment's thought Theoden declares Rohan will answer. The Rohirrim will ride to war. As they prepare, Eowyn insists on riding too, saying the men have found their captain in Aragorn. Merry pledges himself to Theoden's service becoming Meriadoc, Esquire of Rohan. As the Rohirrim gather, 
Theoden gazes upon Rohan's banner one last time, sensing this shall be his final battle. Aomer rallies the men to fulfill their oaths and ride for lord and land, and with that, they all depart for Dunharrow in war. In Asgiliath the orcs slaughter and overwhelm the garrison, decisively defeating Gondor's defense, Faramir barely escapes an orc ambush thanks to covering arrows. Realizing all hope of holding the city is lost, he calls the retreat. During the attack, Faramir's lieutenant is struck down by the cruel Gothmog, who declares the age of men is over. As Faramir's men retreat across the plains they are set upon by Nazgul. They get picked off but just in time, Gandalf and Pippin ride out from Minas Tirith, driving the wraiths back with a beam of light from Gandalf's staff. The remaining rangers safely reach the refuge of the city. Seeing Pippin, Faramir reveals he recently encountered Frodo and Sam headed to Sirith Ungol. Gandalf is alarmed, but before he can learn more, Denethor confronts his son in the throne room, shaming him for losing Asgiliath and allowing the ring to go to Mordor with a hobbit. He claims Boromir would have brought him the ring, but Faramir retorts that it would have corrupted and destroyed him. In Asgiliath, the Witch King commands his forces to unleash total destruction upon Minas Tirith and its people. He vows to personally break the wizard Gandalf. Afterwards, Pippin enters Lord Denethor's service and puts his service and loyalty to him. Angered by Faramir's failure to defend Asgiliath, Denethor spitefully manipulates him to somehow retake the city. Faramir reluctantly obeys his father's bidding, riding off on a hopeless quest. As the hobbits climb the steep stairs, Gollum manipulates Frodo, feigning empathy while poisoning him against loyal Sam, claiming Sam will steal the ring. Later, Gollum blames Sam for eating their provisions, further turning Frodo against him. In his delusional state, Frodo grows suspicious and orders Sam to go home when he innocently offers to carry the ring just as Gollum predicted. Honorably leading a small band of brave soldiers, Faramir rides headlong towards the orc camps outside Asgiliath, but Denethor remains unconcerned, indifferently eating while Pippin sings for him. Faramir and his men valiantly charge right into the orc's arrows, meeting their tragic yet noble deaths as Denethor callously intended. At Dunharrow, Theoden gathers the Rohirrim, but many allies have not arrived. He and Aragorn survey the 6,000 men readied, too few to challenge Mordor. Aragorn urges immediate departure, knowing each lost hour brings Gondor closer to defeat. The men fear the shadowed mountain road, said to be haunted. Aragorn glimpses a ghostly figure but it vanishes. That night, Eowyn prepares Merry for battle, but Aomer doubts the hobbit's readiness, saying war is for men. In his tent, Aragorn has a nightmare about Arwen fading as Sauron rises. Elrond appears, warning Minas Tirith will fall without aid. A Corsair fleet approaches, they need more men. Aragorn insists there are none, but Elrond says the mountain ghosts will answer their king. He presents reforged Andril to embrace his destiny. With Legolas and Gimli, Aragorn takes the haunted path to summon the dead. Rohan doubts his chances, but Theoden insists he must try. Eowyn sadly watches him go, appointed by her uncle to lead Rohan if he falls. Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli enter the haunted mountain paths to the dead men's lair. Legolas recalls Isildur's curse on them to never rest until aiding Gondor. Meanwhile, the Rohirrim and their 6,000 men take off ready for war. Elsewhere, Mordor armies march to war including trolls and orcs. In the caves, the companions confront the ghostly king, who scoffs only Gondor's king may command him. Aragorn reveals Andril, the royal bloodline reforged. The king attacks but Aragorn masterfully disarms him, ordering the ghosts to fulfill their oath at Minas Tirith. They refuse and disappear. As the cave collapses, the companions narrowly escape. Emerging, they see the Corsair fleet sailing from a burning city. Aragorn despairs, believing Gondor lost, but the Ghost King reappears and finally agrees to join the fight. The siege of Minas Tirith begins as 200,000 orcs launch their assault with siege towers and catapults. Faramir is dragged back lifeless. Guards take his body to the citadel where Denethor, believing both sons lost, declares his line ended. Outside, Gothmog catapults massive boulders over the walls causing terror. Denethor proclaims the stewardship over, refusing to heed that Faramir lives. Surveying the army battering his walls, Denethor loses all hope and orders retreat in cowardice. Gandalf intervenes, knocking Denethor out with his staff. Disgusted by his weakness, Gandalf takes command and rallies the city's defense. The battle for Minas Tirith rages on. Gandalf rallies the retreating soldiers to send these foul creatures into the abyss. At his command, the city's trebuchets retaliate, crushing orcs with rubble and debris. Stones rain down amidst the enemy ranks, but Gothmog orders them to stand firm. A fierce catapult duel ensues, dealing casualties to both sides. The battle intensifies as the Witch King and Nazgul swoop from above, destroying catapults and sowing panic. 
Their chilling screeches terrify the men, including Pippin. As the wraiths fly overhead, Gandalf commands the Gondorians to stand firm and not surrender to fear, rallying them to hold their posts despite the peril. The orcs manage to send wave after wave of their merciless horde. The battle engulfs Minas Tirith in carnage. At the Great Gate, orcs ram a battering ram as Pippin joins Gandalf on the walls. Gandalf commands him back to the Citadel. Saving Pippin from orcs, Gandalf firmly states battle is no place for a hobbit. When Pippin kills an attacking orc, Gandalf praises his skill. The gate holds against the ram. So Gothmog orders the massive wolf-shaped ram Gron brought forth, orcs chanting its name. Seeing Gron approach, Gandalf knows the gate will be breached. Elsewhere, Aragorn confronts the Corsairs, warning them not to enter Gondor. When they refuse to surrender, he unleashes the army of the dead upon them. In the tunnels near Sirith Ungol, Gollum abandons Frodo in Shelob's lair. Sam slips returning up the pass but finds Crumb's Gollum cast down, realizing he must rescue Frodo. Alone in the webs Frodo fends off Shelob, a massive spider. But with the file of Galadriel, he flees, realizing Gollum betrayed him. He escapes but Gollum attacks again, only for Frodo to cast him down a cliff, exhausted. Frodo collapses but is roused by Galadriel's vision urging him onward. Though alone he continues his quest to destroy the ring. As the Gron batters the main gate, Gandalf leads the Gondorians to defend the first level. Above, in madness, Denethor prepares to burn himself in living Faramir alive. Pippin suspects disaster and secretly follows. Gron smashes through the gate as trolls and orcs charge in, viciously attacking and killing the front line. Gandalf rallies the soldiers against the endless hordes now overwhelming the burning first level. As Frodo nears Sirith Ungol, Shelob hides and manages to both sting and then web him. Sam arrives, warding Shelob off with the light of Erendil. After a fierce fight, Sam badly wounds the spider, who retreats. Believing Frodo dead, Sam mourns until the sting glows soon to reveal orcs who say Frodo lives. Realizing his mistake, Sam watches helplessly as they take Frodo to the tower. In the tomb, Pippin fails to stop Denethor's madness. Gandalf fights relentlessly amidst the burning city overrun by orcs, ordering retreat to the second level. Pippin finds him and reveals Denethor's plan. Racing to intervene, Gandalf confronts the Witch King, who shatters his staff with dark powers. As the wraith looms over the beaten Gandalf, Rohan's horns sound outside the city. The Witch King shrieks in fury and flies off to confront this new threat. The Rohirrim arrive at the Pelennor fields led by Theoden. Eowyn says courage is needed. Gothmog orders pikemen forward, archers behind. Theoden rallies his men. This is a red day. He leads the glorious charge, arrows fall uselessly as the riders crash through the orcs, trampling and crushing the enemy as the scene shifts to the tomb where Gandalf stops Denethor's madness. Pippin pushes Faramir from the pyre. Seeing his son alive, Denethor burns regardless and casts himself from the city in despair. In the heart of the battlefield, the Rohirrim wreak havoc among the orcs. With valiant effort, the tide of battle seems to turn in their favor. However, as the orcs begin to retreat, a looming shadow of an even bigger threat arises. A colossal line of oliphants, bearing Herodrim warriors, Theoden doesn't hesitate. He rallies his troops and leads another charge, this time targeting the enormous creatures. The oliphants wreak havoc, trampling numerous Rohirrim underfoot. From the heights of these beasts, the Herodrim rain down arrows, intensifying the chaos. In a heroic feat, Aomer manages to unseat a Herodrim captain causing his mount to lose control and crash into another oliphant, toppling them both. During the pandemonium, Eowyn and Mary bravely maneuver through, taking down an oliphant by targeting its legs. As the battle rages, Theoden commands focused fire on another oliphant. Despite their efforts, Eowyn and Mary are thrown off their steed when the beast collapses. Theoden, in his effort to rally the Rohirrim, encounters the chilling Witch King and is grievously injured. Eowyn faces the Witch King, exhibiting immense courage. Though initially overpowered with the unexpected aid from Mary, she declares, I am no man, and strikes the fatal blow, defeating him. Meanwhile, the Black Fleet arrives. To the orc's surprise, Aragorn emerges, leading the spectral army of the dead. With Legolas and Gimli at his side, they charge, overwhelming the orcs. In the midst of this, Legolas and Gimli engage in friendly competition, counting their kills, with Legolas impressively taking down a Mumakal. As the ghost army swarms Minas Tirith, enemies fall like dominoes, turning the battle decisively in favor of the forces of good and marking the end of a fierce conflict. A mortally wounded Theoden dies proudly in Eowyn's arms. As the survivors survey the carnage, Aragorn releases the army of the dead from service. On the battlefield, Pippin desperately searches for Merry, finally finding his injured cousin beneath a dead Mumakal. 
In a crucial turn of events, Sam bravely rescues Frodo amidst the chaos caused by the orc's internal feud over Frodo's treasured mithril shirt. With the tower's distractions, the pair embark on their arduous journey across Mordor, heading to Mount Doom. Back with the Fellowship, Gandalf, with his vast knowledge, reveals the intimidating number of orcs waiting between them and Mount Doom. Aragorn, ever the strategist, offers a solution. Using the Palantir, Aragorn baits Sauron into sending his army to the Black Gate to fight him. As they march, the Black Gate ominously opens, revealing the menacing enemy forces. A tense standoff ensues as both sides prepare for a clash. The men of Middle-earth are quickly encircled, showing the difference in men between both armies. Simultaneously, the path up Mount Doom proves grueling for Frodo and Sam. In a display of true friendship, an exhausted Frodo finds himself carried by Sam. But just as the Battle of the Moranon begins and both sides fight for their lives, Sam is attacked by an angry golem. Amid the turmoil, Frodo narrowly evades the fight and rushes to Mount Doom. But the stakes rise further with the sudden appearance of the Ringwraiths and Griffins, causing severe casualties among the defenders inside the treacherous crack of doom Frodo stands at the cliff face of Middle-earth's fate. Yet in a shocking revelation, he's ensnared by the ring's overpowering allure, choosing to wear it and becoming invisible. This act does not go unnoticed by the eye of Sauron, prompting the Ringwraiths to soar towards Mount Doom. While this unfolds, Gollum knocks Sam out and confronts Frodo, resorting to savage violence to reclaim his precious. He laughs and dances at touching his beloved. But enraged, Frodo lunges at Gollum. Their tussle reaches a climax with both teetering at the edge. In a fateful moment, Gollum clutching the ring plummets into the molten lava sealing the ring's destruction. The impact is cataclysmic. Sauron's eye releases a harrowing scream. His fortress, Barad-dûr, crumbles before disintegrating in a massive explosion, marking the permanent demise of his dark dominion. The forces loyal to Sauron find the ground splitting beneath them in a destructive quake. Mount Doom then erupts killing the ring wraiths as Frodo and Sam escape. They remain stuck on the mountain from the surrounding lava, however. With the annihilation of the Nazgul, Gandalf summons the majestic eagles, who swoop in just in time to rescue the two exhausted hobbits. Upon regaining consciousness, they find themselves in Minas Tirith, joyfully reuniting with their comrades from the Fellowship. All have endured the brutal War of the Ring, and so the city is lit with celebration. The coronation of Aragorn as the King of the West marks the dawn of a harmonious era. He marries Arwen, and in a beautiful moment, all show respect in deep reverence to the valor and heroism of the hobbits. Back in the Shire, Sam marries his beloved Rosie Cotton. Despite these joyous moments, Frodo is haunted by the agonizing wounds inflicted upon him. The Red Book of Westmarch receives Frodo's final entries, detailing his harrowing adventures. The scars of his quest weigh heavily on Frodo. He realizes that the tranquility he seeks cannot be found in Middle-earth. Thus, he resolves to join Gandalf, Bilbo, Elrond, and Galadriel on their voyage to the ethereal Grey Havens. At the Havens, in a heartrending moment, Frodo entrusts Sam with the Red Book, ensuring that the tales of their adventures carry on. As the sails of the last ship catch the winds they journey along the straight road, venturing toward the ethereal horizon of the uttermost west. In the last scene, Sam walks back up the lane to Bag End, where he is greeted by his wife Rosie and his children. If you enjoyed this trilogy recap, The Hobbit is up next, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Thank you.